celebrate today on the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Whether you are a member or visitor, we welcome you all. Welcome those who are worshiping with us online. This morning's service will follow the service of Word and Sacrament that begins on page 26 in the front of the hymnal. Our theme for our worship this morning as we look at uh, the readings and uh, the hymns and sermon is uh, the senses that God has given us, and particularly the senses of sound and speech, the ability to hear and listen, and how we'll want to use those things to praise and honor our God. We'll begin with the ring of the bells and then join to sing the opening hymn, hymn number 222.
Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ.
continues a series of readings from the Apostle James. Today we read from chapter 1. Much of the book of James is not so much doctrinal uh, theses as it is practical advice for Christians of all ages living their faith and putting their faith into practice. This morning James gives us advice on doing that with what we say and how we listen. Every good act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the lights, who does not change or shift like a shadow. Just as he planned, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creations. Remember this, my dear brothers. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Certainly a man's anger does not bring about what is right before God. So after getting rid of all moral filthiness and overflowing wickedness, receive with humility the word planted in you. It is able to save your souls. Be people who do what the word says, not people who only hear it. Such people are deceiving themselves. In fact, if anyone hears the word and does not do what it says, he is like a man who carefully looks at his own natural face in a mirror. Indeed, he carefully looks at himself. Then he goes away and immediately forgets what he looked like. But the one who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continues to do so, since he does not hear and forget, but actually does what it says, that person will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself to be religious, but deceives his own heart because he does not bridle his tongue, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled in the sight of God the Father is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This ends our epistle lesson. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it. Rejoice. Hallelujah.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word we focus on today is taken again from the letter of James, chapter 1, beginning with the 19th verse. Remember this, my dear brothers, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Certainly a man's anger does not bring about what is right before God. So after getting rid of all moral filthiness and overflowing wickedness, receive with humility the word planted in you. It is able to save your souls. Be people who do what the word says, not people who only hear it. Such people are deceiving themselves. So far the word of God. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Once again, summer is waning and autumn is knocking at the door. The days are getting shorter. The nights are getting cooler. Leaves are beginning to turn and fall. And soon the stores will be putting up their Christmas displays, if they haven't already. Christmas is an important time of year for those in the retail world, because Christmas necessitates the giving of gifts which for stores means the buying of gifts, and that's the part they're most interested in. But of course, you can give gifts at any time of year. You don't have to wait until Christmas. And perhaps you know someone who is always giving out gifts, or maybe you only wish you did. The Word of God today reminds us that God is one of those kind. He's always giving out gifts, and his gifts are not just useful, trendy, they're perfect. And they're just what we need. Today we'll focus on two of his gifts, the gift of sound and the gift of speech. And what wonderful blessings those gifts of his really can be and truly are. We don't have to take a lot of convincing to know what a wonderful blessing it is to be able to hear things. That the gift of sound is one of God's nicest gifts. With our ears, we listen to our favorite kind of music, whether it's something we've bought, downloaded, or we're at a live concert. With our ears, we hear those precious words, I love you, from a child, a parent, a grandchild, a spouse, our grandparents. And we treasure those few little words because they mean so much. Our ears also alert us to danger as we hear the tooting of the car horn just before we change lanes so that we don't change lanes. We hear the voice of someone yelling out, watch out for whatever potential danger there was. And we recognize what a wonderful blessing it is to be able to hear things. Perhaps because we've heard things since before we could remember, we tend to take it for granted. If your hearing isn't what it used to be, maybe you have a greater appreciation for that gift because you recognize it's not a gift that will always last forever and people are always telling us to be careful, don't be too close to loud sounds for too long or wear protective ear coverings, if you are, because being able to hear really is a wonderful blessing. And nowhere is that more evident than when it comes to hearing what God wants to say to us. James isn't talking only about listening to music or to the words of a child or a grandparent that says, I love you, or to the warnings of the person who's backing out of their driveway. No, James wants people to listen to everything, to discern what is good and what isn't, and then to act accordingly. And so he says that we all ought to be slow to speak, quick to listen. He doesn't just say we should be quick to hear, but quick to listen. And there's a difference. Wives, you know there's a difference, don't you, between hearing and listening. Yes, my wife says, there's definitely a difference between hearing and listening. We hear lots of things. When we listen, that takes effort to do something intently and intentionally to pay attention to what is being said to us. 
And James would have us do that when it comes to the Word of God. And that's why we have to be quick to listen, ready to do that, without passing judgment, without all of a sudden interrupting and saying, well, wait a minute. But that's not always easy when it comes to listening to God when He speaks to us, because God says a lot in His Word. And some of what God says is not easy to listen to. And because it's not always easy to listen to, often people don't want to listen at all then. In the 18th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, God says very plainly in words that are unmistakable, the soul that sins, it will die. Our Lord Jesus also says things that aren't always warm and fuzzy. He says in the Gospel of Matthew, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And the prophet Isaiah tells us that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Even the good things we do are like a dirty cloth that should be thrown away. None of these things would be considered complimentary. But it's important, James says, that we listen to them because there's a purpose to these things. Because the same God who said in Ezekiel 18, the soul that sins is the soul that will die, said in Ezekiel chapter 33, I don't want anyone to die. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their evil ways and live. The same Jesus who said, not everyone who calls says to me, Lord, Lord, also says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that prophet Isaiah who said that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags, that's the same prophet who wrote more gospel in his book than any other author in Old Testament times. We have to listen intently and fully to what God is saying to us. And that's important for anyone and everyone. And that's always so important when we're dealing with others because that's one of our purposes in life is to praise God with our lives. No matter what we do with our life, whether we're retired, fully employed, young, old, man, woman, does not make any difference. A purpose to our life is to praise God with our life. And part of that is going to be listening to other people. And using God's word with them. And so we're going to run across in our lives, and you probably already have, People who don't see things the way you see them, people who don't share the faith that you have in Jesus as your Savior, or people whose lives don't seem to reflect that. And we may wonder, well, why is it? And it's easy to pass judgment. It's easy to be quick to speak. But James says, don't be quick to speak. Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen. Find out why they think the way they do. That doesn't mean you agree with them. It doesn't mean they're right. But out of concern and courtesy, we'll let them speak and find out what they are thinking and why they think that way. And then, because no one just listens all the time, eventually we all want to say something. We see that with little kids. They're anxious to contribute to conversations. Even if it's completely unrelated to everything else, all the big people we're talking about. We see it in our world at large. There's talk radio. There are talk shows on television. There are internet blogs, which are nothing but people talking over the internet, but you don't hear them, you just read their words. We've been given the gift to hear. We've also been given the gift to speak. And that's a gift God wants us to use. It's a perfect gift, as all of his gifts are. He wants us to use it well and to use it wisely. And it's a, necessi it's a necessary gift. I mean, we heard our little girl, our granddaughter, our grandparents say, I love you. But they didn't use their ears to tell us. They spoke those words. We heard them with the ears, but they had to speak them with the tongue. We praise God with our voices. Already a couple of times today in hymns and in other parts of our liturgy, with our tongues. We love to listen to our favorite kind of music, but somebody has to sing it. 
our favorite songs came from someone else's mouth, so they're using that gift of speech. And James says, that's just fine. Doesn't say never use it. But he said, be slow to speak and quick to listen. Put listening first, then speak. And so when we share the word of God with someone, we'll want to listen to what they have to say, but then we'll be quick to share that word with them. But if all they ever hear is God's law, they'll either become embittered against God and want nothing to do with him, or they'll despair that they can ever be close to him, or they'll think pretty highly of themselves as though they were Pharisees, because after all, there's a lot of things that God says they shouldn't do, which they don't. So when we speak, we want to give people the full message, the law of God, but also that other great teaching of Scripture, the gospel, so that they understand that the Lord who says he will punish sin, that the wages of sin is death, as he told the Romans through the Apostle Paul, he follows that up with the very next statement, the gift of God is eternal life. A gift that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, not through doing any work. As God reminded the Corinthians that he had made him who had no sin, that was Jesus, to be sin for us. Christ has taken them away. And it is by God's grace that you and I have that, because we know the passage very well. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. Not for yourselves. It's a gift of God. When we know those things, God wants us to speak them to other people. Once we've listened to their situation, God wants us to let them know he loves them just as much as he loves us. And so we have that wonderful opportunity to use the gifts that God has given us to listen and to speak. What is the most appropriate way that you and I have to show our gratitude for the gifts we receive? You know, your wife gets you a new shirt. She's excited, it's trendy, it's the right size, and it's been hanging in your closet for months. You might want to wear it to show your gratitude to her for the gift. Your husband buys you something, whatever it is, jewelry, latest gadget for your home, whatever you like. Ladies, you'd want to use it, wear it, show him that it means something to you. Your parents bought you something. Maybe it wasn't what you were hoping for, but it still was given with love. We would use it. Today, you and I will make good use of all these gifts that God has given us. Tomorrow and every other day as well. We'll get up and with the gift of time that he gives us, we will earn a living for ourselves or our family. We'll go to school and we'll learn. We'll go to school and we'll teach. We will use some of our time and energy to maybe enjoy a hobby that we have. Just do some relaxing. Read a good book. All fine uses of our time. We will take the gift of ability that God has given us, whatever your ability is, and incorporate that ability into your day-to-day -day activity. We'll take the gift of hearing that God has given us and want to be quick to listen when God speaks to us. But of course, God doesn't speak to us directly from heaven. He speaks to us in his word through the mouths of others. And we as Christian husbands, wives, fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, neighbors, siblings, we are the mouthpiece of God himself. We hear what he says to us and we speak it to others so that they too, hopefully, will come to be quick to listen using the gift of hearing that God has given them. And then they too will understand just how much he cares for us and, and uh, cares for them. And that among all the gifts he's given them, time, abilities, money, speech, hearing, there is one gift that stands above them all. That gift of salvation that overshadows every other gift that is his greatest gift to you, to me, and to them.
And so, dear friends, as we go through life exercising our gifts and putting them to use, the big ones and the little ones, may we follow the encouragement of the Apostle James and be slow to speak, quick to listen. Then once we've listened, let us be quick to speak the words of God. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing as the offering is brought forward. Thank you for the 95 years of grace that you have granted to your servant, Mrs. Mildred Spurbeck. 
We praise you for being with her in good times and in bad times, in joys and in sorrows, in sickness and in health. We praise you above all for having provided her with the rich comfort of your word and sacraments. Continue to make these treasures her joy and delight. Be her strength, even when earthly strength fails. And finally, bring her and all of us to the joy and glory of eternal life in your presence. The Lord Jesus ascended Savior, you have commanded us to instruct the young in your saving truths. We pray that you would bless our Sunday school, teachers and students and parents alike, as they begin another academic year. We ask that you would give students willing and attentive ears and hearts to learn the lessons of love that are taught to them. Give to the teachers patience and insight so that they might be able to communicate your truths with as much care and concern as they are able to do so. Grant that your word might be passed down from one generation to the next until all of your lambs are safely gathered into your eternal fold. These and all our prayers we bring in Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the communion liturgy on page 33. The Lord be with you.
depart the house of the Lord in peace. Amen. Thank you.